Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I'm Pastor George Pearsons. This is my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, and we are so honored to be on this broadcast together. Terry, this is the fulfillment of what happened so many years ago at ORU. Yes. The Lord putting together our lives, and one day we would be on TV. Yeah, I know, and I was taking TV classes, and That's right. the, your oral communication class came in and put you in front of the camera. <laughs> yep. Only on that one, I was behind the camera. Making fun of me. I was going to say that. Yeah, but they you really tell. were. <laughs> yeah, but you know, people don't realize that it was actually Terry that started the television department of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Actually, you went to ORU to learn how to do television to do what? Put your dad on TV. Put dad on TV. And I think that's yep. pretty amazing. Yep, and we got her done. <laughs> well, it's, and, it is. It's, and since then, there's a great team that puts these broadcasts together, That's not right. just this one, but all, all the broadcasts on the Victory Channel that, that we put out our original programming. Tremendous. I'm so thankful. We Tremendous. have a great, great and very talented group of people. They are. You know, this week on the broadcast, this week and next week, we are digging into the topic of forgiveness, letting things go, releasing that forgiveness in our lives. We're calling this the lifestyle of forgiveness. And really, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to all of us to, to step up our game when it comes to forgiving others. And we began yesterday talking about this, Terry, and we, we really covered a lot of ground. As a matter of fact, all of the notes that we are using here are available on kcm.org slash notes. You can access those, you can print them out. Pastors, you can use this as an entire series for your church, and you can build on top of what we've done here, uh, being able to put all of these scriptures together and all of these thoughts together. So we're talking about this this week, and, and we had a great time. I just want to mention something you said to pastors. I was reminded, I know we quote Brother Hagen a lot, but he's really helped us over all yeah. these years. Yeah. He's a very wise man and very successful in spiritual things. And he, he said as he pastored, he said there were two topics that he came back oh, around yeah. to oh, yeah. a lot. And he spoke on them very frequently. And one of them was the love of God, talking about God's love for us, God's love to us, God's love through us, and the importance of it in our lives. And really, we as pastors need to be reminded of that Absolutely. instead of just complaining about congregation members that don't walk in love together. <laughs> you gotta preach on it. Yeah. You, you get what you preach. Yeah, that's true. Let me start here with our foundation scripture. This is Mark 11, 22 through 26, and I'm gonna read it to you from the Amplified Translation. And Jesus replying to them said, have faith in God constantly. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. And whenever you, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, let it drop, leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your failings and your shortcomings. You know, I stopped to think right there about, it says, let it drop. Jesus was very uh, picturesque when he, when he described things. Let it drop. Let it go. What does that mean? So when you, you have something, it's like, let go of it. Just let go of it. Just like yeah. that. Not, yeah. not hang on to it and kind of, sort of, and think about it. And how, just right then and there. Yeah. Let it go. Let it drop. Let it drop and roll away. The other yeah. day, I pulled out a bag of apples out of the refrigerator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were small ones, and, I, and it was supposed to be sealed, yeah. but it oh. wasn't. And I opened it up, and those things started rolling out. And I thought, there is no way I'm going to stop all yeah. those apples from... So I stood there, and you know what I did? I let them drop. You let them I just drop. let them drop, and I watched them. <laughs> and they rolled here, and they rolled yeah. there. And, yeah. and there was uh, one that rolled under the stove. Oh. And I looked, and I looked, I and it disappeared. I thought, yeah. there... What yeah. happened to that apple? We had to pull the stuff out. <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> well, <laughs> it disappeared. Now, you can't let 
apples remain under the stove right. cuz you'll pay for that later yeah. but you can let unforgiveness drop and just roll away yeah. and don't go looking for it don't go try to find it don't go look it up yeah. and let the lord just swallow that thing yeah, yeah, and yeah. take it away don't don't rehearse it don't, don't. keep going back over it that's over right. and over again. And, yeah, and it takes, you know what the beauty of this whole dissertation is, yeah. right here is Jesus was talking to them about faith and he brings love up. Love is important to faith, but yeah. I want you to know faith is important to love yeah. because there are a lot of things we have to let go of by faith. Sometimes because people are really, really difficult and other times because we're stubborn. And so it takes faith. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it takes faith to let go. It yeah. takes faith, and he said the way you do it, he said the way you do that is you, you speak it away from you. You speak yes. things to you, you speak things away from you, and that's where you stop and say, I let that go. Yes. Sometimes you need a little yeah. demonstration to yeah. go with it. I let it go, and visualize Pastor Terry and her refrigerator, and the apples just rolling away. That Let that be you. Just let, let all that, maybe you have one apple, Actually, I had one apple do that one time, and then the other day a whole bag, something about the apples. Yeah. It could be one thing, it could be a whole bag full. Yeah. Just let them drop. You could go on with this illustration with Buffet. rotten apples. Yep. Let them go. <laughs> and I made myself laugh. <clears throat> okay. Can I go on? Please. First 25, New Living Translation. But when you're praying, first, Forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Ooh, that one's pretty strong. You know, and the Lord's there to help. He, <laughs> he Not only to help us, first of all, he'll help us recognize that because he knows how critical this is. Yeah. He'll help us see when we need to let go of something because we, we can have for unforgiveness for people and sometimes be so well practiced at it that we don't even realize it, that it's become a habit because we justify our thinking. Yeah. And, and there may be good reason for there to be unforgiveness in that, what that Certainly. person did, Certainly. but there's no excuse for not letting it go. Yeah. This uh, message translation, when you assume the posture of prayer, remember that it's not all asking. If you have anything against someone, forgive. Only then will your heavenly Father be inclined to also wipe your slate clean of sins. I like how many wow. times Jesus brings up the Father. <clears throat> yeah. He keeps talking about the Father. So our prayer, we see our a New Testament yep. prayer is to to God in the name of Jesus, but so it's it's all an engagement. Yep. You know, Enoch, he walked with God, but he did it by faith and he did it so proficiently <clears throat> that he was just caught up in the spirit. And I believe that that is an indication of the catching away of the church. But, but this faith has to work by love. Love then, George, yep. you know, it appears yep. that faith by love, yep. love by faith, yes. are really integral in this walk with God yep. so that, that we're prepared for the coming of the exactly. Lord. Exactly. Now, we're, we're getting to a punchline here on something, a literal punchline. <laughs> Thank you. Let oh, me read this to you. Please forgive me. <laughs> you are forgiven. <laughs> You'll let that apple roll into the oven. Anyway, let me read this to you. Everyone has had things done and said to them, that have caused hurt and offense. Some big, some small. The small ones are dangerous because we may not check ourselves and be sure we're not holding on to it. Then, when someone has, has had enough demerits, we let them have it. Let me read this to you. To walk in unforgiveness is to harbor, hold on to, store in your heart the offense, the bitterness, the hatred, the animosity, the resentment, the anger, the ill will towards those who have hurt you, falsely accused you, let you down, <clears throat> abandoned you, made life miserable for you, stabbed you in the back, rejected you, and done you wrong. Now, Terry, I wanted to get that out so that we could have a, a frame of reference to work from because everybody has experienced that. Every one of us have gone through things like that. And you may be at that point right now 
where you're walking in a place of unforgiveness. I can't forgive him. You don't know what he did. You don't know what he said. You don't know what he've done. he's done. But we have to realize that to forgive is a command from God. And really, that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the command to forgive. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and look at verses 31 and 32. Terry? Let all bitterness, wrath, so there are different expressions of, of, uh, just like there are different expressions of love, there are different expressions that are not love. Yeah, that's good. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you. That includes, uh, you know, that includes not only gossip, but Brother Hagen, again, refer to him again. He said, you know, when you assume somebody else doesn't like you, that's thinking evil of them. That's (coughs) expecting something evil of them. And when you pass that on, when you perpetuate it, even to yourself, it's evil speaking. Put it away from you with all malice or all levels of ill will. Be kind to one another. These are the direct opposites. Kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah. You know, so we in Christ have to forgive others. Exactly. The message says, forgive one another as quickly Quickly. and thoroughly Mm. as God in Christ forgave you. Wow, wow. Verse 32, forgiving one another in the Amplified Classic readily and freely as God in Christ forgave you. In other words, God could forgive you because Christ Jesus, the work that he did as he came as a person, in him, God looks at us through him and what he did. We should look at others, even unbelievers. We look at them through Christ. Uh, and how he sees them. He sees them as a lost sheep. He sees them not as someone he wants to exterminate, get rid of, but somebody that he wants yeah, exactly. to draw close. Yeah, and it's, this is a command. It, it's a command when it says, you let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor. Now, clamor is being quarrelsome and contentious. And evil speaking, be put away from you. Be put away from you with all malice or levels of ill will, to be put away from us with malice. I mean, that is a serious thing to do. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That that is a command from God. And it says here, you read this, forgiving one another readily and freely, quickly and thoroughly in the same way that we have been forgiven. You know, Terry, I was talking to Christine Bloomstein, who is our uh, director of our African office in Johannesburg. And I remember when Nelson Mandela first passed away, and I was, I happened to be on a phone call with Christine shortly after that took place. So we were talking about, um, about Nelson Mandela. And one of the things that she said to me, and I, I quote Christine, <clears throat> she said a major attribute of Nelson Mandela was that he forgave easily. And I thought, what a statement. You think about a person who's gone through everything that he's gone through, the challenges, the attacks, being put in prison for years and years and years. But she said one of the characteristics of Nelson Mandela was that he forgave easily. I want that to be for me. I want that to be for us, that we forgive easily. And he, I wrote this down here. He had a Joseph-like testimony. Joseph forgave and went from prison to a position of nationwide leadership. The same thing with Nelson Mandela. You know that part about forgiving quickly, George, yeah. I'm reminded, yeah. sitting in the office one day, and there was a young woman on our staff that came in and asked to talk to me, clearly very, very distraught. And she said to me, uh, she actually fell on her knees crying. And she had discovered that her husband was cheating on her. And, and it wasn't mm. just as simple as that. There were other um, 
details that were pretty sorted about the whole situation. And she fell on her knees crying and she told me that and she said, I choose to forgive, I choose to forgive, I choose to forgive, I choose to forgive. And she told me that in the moment that she found out about it, she began to shout, I choose to forgive, I forgive quickly. Now, through the course of time, she had to continue to exercise that, continue it, because it wasn't immediately remedied. In fact, over eventually, it, the, the marriage wound up being dissolved but the, because of the ongoing situation. However, the point about it was she stayed in the place of freedom. Every time there was more to be yeah. uncovered, I choose <clears throat> to wow. forgive. Wow. I choose to forgive. I, I forgive, forgive. I forgive. I forgive. And because of that, yeah. the Lord was able to move and step in and take care of her, take care of her situation, turn her situation. And she's okay. She's okay. And that really is the crux of it all, yeah. is to get yeah. us to a place to where we stay okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't always work out with other people. They don't always yeah. make the change. <clears throat> But we never want to be the reason they don't make the change. But even more than that, we want to stay in a place where God can get to us yeah. and get us to that place. That's what yeah. Nelson Mandela did. Yes. And as a result of that, he went, he went out of prison and eventually became the leader of South Africa because he chose to forgive. That's just like Joseph, Nelson Mandela. And that doesn't mean people are perfect or that you always like what yeah. their politics yeah. are. Come on. The judge, that there's a, the, the Lord told uh, someone, he said, <clears throat> people, Christians will find they face judgment over spiritual sins. What's a spiritual sin? Those are the things where, where you're not walking in, in the love of God, okay? Those kind of things, strife, bitterness, sowing <clears throat> discord, and unforgiveness. Yeah. You find <clears throat> judgment will come down on you. Hard things happen more because of that than any yeah. other mistake that you uh, would readily identify. Yeah. When you look at the word forgive, in the Greek, it means to completely and permanently re- remove the offense. It means, and, and I do this, Terry, when I do word studies, I look at this because I study these words very carefully. It means to send away, it means to dismiss, to release, to let go, to lay aside, to cancel, to pardon, to wipe the slate clean. And in the, the book that we're offering, this Rick Renner book, um, he said this word forgive is a powerful Greek word and it means to permanently dismiss, to liberate completely, to discharge, to send away, and to release. And the best modern day translation of this word forgive is to let it go. Let it go. Sometimes you have to demand for it to go. Yeah. You know, there was a lady one time, yeah. and she came out the front door, and our little dog followed her, and she said, now go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, trying to get it to go away, and it wouldn't. So she stomped her foot and said, get! One little dog yeah. turned and rawr, rawr, ran away because she yeah. insisted. Sometimes yeah. thoughts and feelings Feelings don't dictate whether or not we've forgiven, but you can command your feelings. Now you line up with what I have done by faith. I forgave, now feelings line up. But feelings are not the definition yeah. of forgiveness. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a heart issue. It is it's a heart issue. not an emotional And it's one. a decision. Mm-hmm. It's a decision that we make to forgive. And people, <clears throat> people have said to me before, but pastor, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what they did. You don't know what they said but then you have to keep going back to the word of God, to the command to forgive, to be able to forgive when it seems like it's the most impossible thing to do. I know you've been through issues. Terry and I have been through issues together, but together we've had to forgive. We've had to let things go. We've had to release it because if you don't, it's gonna hang on to you and it's gonna cause you to become dull to the things of the Spirit, to be able to let that go. And I think about this, Israel, and what they've been through. (laughs) 
and what those families have experienced. Maybe that's one of those things that you can't forgive. Maybe Hamas is something you can't forgive. But according to the word, we have to. Well, that's why I think we're gonna talk about this later on, that that, that there's there's some things that you, you forgive and you can release people from being accountable for it. But there are other things that forgiveness means I don't have malice in my heart. And I don't have anger or bitterness yeah. in my heart, yeah. but it doesn't release that release. person yes. from being accountable for what they've done. But we, even in that, we have to yeah. uh, keep that in line with the laws of God, which yeah. defines to us about what that that looks like. And, and, there are times, and I've read from read after Holocaust survivors yes. that have said that yes. and said, yes. and their perspective is very good. He said, now to forgive them in the sense of releasing them from all accountability, I said, I can't do that. That part's for God to do. Yeah. He said, but I can move forward without malice against them, yes. not let it affect me, mm. and move on mm. with, the, with peace mm. and contentment in my own heart. Yeah. No bitterness, no yeah. anger. That's remarkable. Yeah. But Jesus on that cross, yeah, the cross. okay, what he went yeah. through, because he still had he still had an assignment, and that was in hell and the resurrection, and he couldn't taint that assignment yeah. by being bitter as he hung on the cross. Father, forgive them. And that's something forgive else, them. is that he turned them over to God. For their yes, forgiveness. Exactly. Let God, let God work that. That's the point. There are times when you forgive by faith, even though everything inside of you is just crying out, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. But you do it by faith. And, and I really believe that where something like Hamas is concerned, if a person will release that, I believe the Lord will take care of it. Oh, you know he is, and he's, he, he's been busy taking he's care of it. He said he would, it. and he said, remember, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. If you release them, I will handle it. Yep. I will deal with it. Let me deal with it. I will take care of it. All you have to do is let it go. Let the, let the bitterness go. Let the bitterness Let's go. Let's pray that, Father. Yes. thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I let it go. Say that. I let it go. I let bitterness go. go. I let anger go. I let unforgiveness go. Now, the love of God that's in my heart. Thank you, Father. I embrace it. Yes. Thank you, Father, for helping me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I believe there are people being healed right now because you've done that. We're going to be talking about it more next week. The connection between healing and forgiveness. But I believe right now, because somebody prayed that prayer, you're being made well. And the weight is being lifted off. And the bitterness is going to be gone forever. You won't even remember it. We'll be right back. God's Word tells us over and over to forgive, but why does it seem so hard to do? You are not alone in your struggle to forgive. With the book, You Can Get Over It by Rick Renner, you'll learn how to walk free of the negative attitudes that have kept you bound and bitter. The devil would like nothing more than to keep you down in unforgiveness and misery. Don't let him. In this book, Rick Renner describes how life change comes from a heart change. Jesus understands your emotions, frustrations, and temptations, and still calls us to forgive because it's freedom for you. Walk through the 10 powerful steps to keep your heart free from bitterness and strife. Forgive and see a breakthrough in your health, finances, and relationships. Don't let the devil have a stronghold in your life. No offense is worth sabotaging your future. Pray the prayer of forgiveness in the back of the book and thrive in a bitterness-free future. Start your journey to a life of forgiveness with Rick Renner's book, You Can Get Over It. 
Get your copy for only $9.99 on kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. Be empowered by God's Word and find out how to make the quality choice to forgive and receive the good things God has for you. This offer is good for 60 days. Outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. In 2024, there's a KCM event for you. Come be a part of one of our free meetings and build your faith. December 31, join us for the New Year's Eve service at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas. April 4 through 6, make plans to be at the Branson Victory Campaign in Branson, Missouri. July 29 through August 3, come to the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. I really enjoyed reading Rick Renner's book. I mean, this is tremendous, the quotes that he has. I've been doing my homework, and let me read this to you. It's, he says, when we harbor wrong attitudes in our hearts, those attitudes restrict us from moving up into higher realms of God's presence and glory. We won't be able to enter the, into the full dimension of God that's available to us because those negative attitudes will block us from experiencing His anointing. That's why we're instructed to keep our hearts free of offense, yes. powerful books. <laughs> Some people say, how in the world can I do that? I like this testimony. The woman went to her pastor and she said, I hate my mother-in-law. What am I going to do? And he said to her, act like you love her because you do. The love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. That's He's right. there. So act like you love that person by faith and let love engage. You know, that's a that's best ten dollars you could spend all week. Really, Pastor George, is really. to order I have, that book. I have so in, I want to teach it in church. I just want to. Well, good. We want to hear it. Go from away you. for about two weeks, study it, okay. get notes, and come back. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have this that we want to give to you: the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. All you have to do is let us know that you want that. It's just full of articles and insightful things from programmers that will on the Victory Channel that will teach you faith and how to walk and live by faith. That's right. Now, tomorrow on the broadcast, we're gonna continue our study of walking in forgiveness. And Terry, we're gonna talk about the detrimental effects of unforgiveness. We need to know how it affects us. Yeah, when you, when you hear this, you're gonna to wanna to forgive. You, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. There are things that happen and take place that we need to know. So stay with us for tomorrow's broadcast. Until then, remember this, God loves you, we, we love, love you, you, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice and it is the voice of victory.